is such an important outlet for me. I talk about it all the time. It helps me process things and figure out what I'm feeling. Um, our next guest can relate to that. He was just 16 when he landed in a juvenile detention facility, scared and isolated until someone encouraged him to write. And that outlet actually helped him turn his life around. Now he's helping kids going through what he actually experienced and teaching them the power of the pen. And that is what we call a rad human. So yeah. tell us about your time in juvenile detention. What was going on? Yeah, so um, just to offer some background, right? I was 12 years old, came from an intact family, parents divorced, and I had a younger brother, nine years younger than me. And it was a really tough time for me, right? Being just 12 and having to be separated from my dad and from my brother. Mm -hmm. And so I had to take some time to adjust to just living with my mom. And unfortunately, a few years later, when I was only 15, my brother was diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So my entire world flipped upside down. And I was looking for love and support that I was unable to find at home. And mm -hmm. it's not because my parents weren't trying to be their, the best parents possible, but it's because they were still trying to cope with the revelation of my brother's diagnosis. They're dealing with it, yeah. Exactly. And so I turned to the wrong people looking for that sense of love and support. Um, unfortunately, made a series of very poor decisions that led to my arrest when I was 16 years old. Yeah. So I was sent to a juvenile hall in Los Angeles County where I was there for about two years awaiting the outcome of my case. And throughout that time, my case was transferred from the juvenile court system to the adult court system. And um, about seven months into my stay at this juvenile hall, a Catholic chaplain, a, a nun by the name of Sister Janet Harris, approached me out of the blue one day and she asked if I would be interested in participating in this innovative creative writing class. I was initially so reluctant because I was like, you know, I'm not going to go and try to sit in this creative writing class. I'm only 16. I have my entire life, you know, in limbo. I don't know what's going to happen. What is writing going to do for me? Mm -hmm. And she was just like, you know, I want you to give it a try because I think you're going to be, you know, very surprised about what you're going to be able to identify within yourself. You're you're going to be able to believe in your own potential and it's going to be so important for you to share your story tell your own story don't let other people tell it for you that's incredible so eventually you. you couldn't make classes so what happened yeah so you know i was in this juvenile hall right and i was invited to participate and uh, met my writing program teacher a person by the name of Mark Salzman, and I was able to meet with him for about seven months or so before i was transferred to the adult state prisons Prior to my transfer, you know, I was really able to learn from him mm -hmm. what um, creative writing could do for all of us. And I, you know, say to this day that's by found probably the most important um, life-changing uh, lessons I've learned in my entire life. Unfortunately, when I was transferred to state prison, those classes weren't available for me. But what I learned from Mark, you know, remained with me throughout my entire time incarcerated. And it was a place for me to find reprieve. You know, though I was physically still confined in this incarceration facility, I was able to mentally escape, you know. So late at night when everyone was asleep, when it was just me alone with my thoughts, because once a person is incarcerated, that's really all they have, right, mm -hmm. is their dignity and their thoughts. I was really able to, like, you know, just free myself from the confines of my imprisonment and just to be able to, like, you know, dream big uh, and imagine, you know, yeah. imagine yeah, yeah, exactly. And so that was something that, you know, really saved my life. Yeah, I imagine opportunity, possibility, all of that kind of flows out through the pen. So what, what happened when you got out? When I got out, the world had evolved. You know, I was like literally living in this time capsule for 13 and a half years. And in 2012, after just showing up at the right places, right, networking, meeting the right people, I was but invited. showing up. And showing up, yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I was able to be recruited by Inside Out Writers, you know, which had formed as a nonprofit organization throughout my years incarcerated, you know, while I was away. And mm -hmm. so I became the case manager, providing direct services, helping young people just like me who came home after incarceration with housing support, transportation support, obtaining life documents, counseling, getting them back into school, you know, finding gainful employment. Just and, such an incredible thing because yeah. it's not just lip service. You've actually been there. You've experienced exactly. it. You're talking to them in real 
exactly. real time. Like, you know, I have been there. That's an incredible thing. Thank you. And it's yeah. like what a lot of people are calling credible messengers now, right? Yeah. And so um, in any case, I was at the case manager for about three years, was promoted to the alumni program director, you know, overseeing all of our reentry services and included pro-social activities in, that um, consist of cultural field trips, writing circles, community engagements, and life skills workshops. Yeah. And so in about two years past that, 2017 is when the board of directors, you know, gave me um, this incredible opportunity to become the interim executive director, to be at the helm of the organization. And a year later, since 2018, I've been the executive director of this organization. That's incredible, Thank man. you. Thank you. So what is the kind of impact that you've seen on these kids? Going back to what we were talking about earlier about, you know, you never know how things can change and how people could come into your life. I really believe that's the definition of each one teach one, right? We all have this remarkable opportunity mm -hmm. that can come up at any time to be able to make a positive impact. And so through our work, you know, we recently have been able to create what we call the Youth Diversion Program because one of the things that really stood out to me was that we were waiting until after it was too late, after, you know, these actions had already taken place and a kid found themselves incarcerated before we can reach out to them. Mm -hmm. So our youth diversion program in partnership with the Department of Youth um, Development in LA County now offers an opportunity for young people who are coming into contact with law enforcement agencies. And if it's like a misdemeanor or minor offense, instead of historic practices of arrest and incarceration, these young people are now able to be redirected to organizations like Inside Out Riders, where we have case Incredible. managers. Yeah, thank you, who are able to help interrupt that, right? Where they're now able to meet them right where they are, Utilizing give them a the chance, give exactly. them an opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. Figure out what's going on in your life. Why are mm -hmm. you know you making certain decisions, right? And doing our very best to support them in every way possible. Mm -hmm. So that's something we're really proud of. And so far in just two years' time, over 70 youth who would have previously been incarcerated have now been able to be like diverted from incarceration altogether, right? That's so we're, incredible. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. How many lives have been changed because of that? That's incredible. Exactly. And, you know, going to our alumni program, our reentry services, you know, the national recidivism or reincarceration rate is 75%. Participants of our program now have, you know, proven that our, our, our work is helpful for them because we have less than a 10% recidivism rate. That's insane. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You. Yeah. Oh, well, we have someone in the audience who says Inside Out Riders changed the entire trajectory of her life. Everybody, please say hello to Christine. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hi. Share your experience with Inside Out. I came into contact with Inside Out Riders through my own incarceration. I was only 15 years old, and it was the first time I had ever been in contact with the system. And one of our writing teachers, Johnny Kovach, and he still goes in right now and works for us, he went in and he found me and he helped me really find hope in there and remember that I had potential and remember that I was still worthy and able to help even behind the walls. It reminded you to believe in yourself. Yeah, yeah. everybody needs that. Definitely. Absolutely. How has life, you know, changed after? Um, since I've been home, I got back in contact with Johnny Kovach, who then put me in contact with Jimmy Wu, reminded me, you know, be a part of our alumni program that you're already a part of. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I sit here today seeing all the things that writing has given me and like having a network and family that comes directly from IOW. And as of recently, becoming a case manager myself and programs assistant for Inside Out Writers. That's amazing. <laughs> what does Inside Out Writers mean to you when people ask you about it? Obviously it changed, I mean, you could, it could have gone a very different way, you know? Definitely. Um, to me, Inside Out Writers is like love and support and family. Um, there's a lot of organizations out here and we're all doing good work. And I think what sets us apart is that we're doing our work with love and with that remembrance that not everybody has a support system. Not everybody has even gotten a first chance mm -hmm. to say, here's your second. Um, and just really seeing them for who they are and loving them. And, you know, Jimmy Woo, I love you so much. I give it up to you because he keeps it going. He is the heartbeat that's currently reminding us, you know, continue to emulate what he's doing, where it's like, if you give these kids a chance, look what they can become, so. Absolutely. We're, we are big believers um, that writing has the power to let people heal and flourish. Um, so our season-long partner, Pilot Pen, makers of G2 and the new G2 Edge, the go-to pins of the Kelly Clarkson Show, they want to see Inside Out writers continue to grow as we do. So they're gonna, gonna give you all $5,000 just to help out. <laughs> and, and honestly, writing, 
have changed my life. I talk about it all the time on the show, and I know I'm a, a songwriter, but not even for songwriting. It, it really changed my life. Not everybody has the capability um, of right in the moment saying how they feel. They need a minute, right? And I've always been that person, and it changed my life. So I love what you're doing, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna match it. So I'm gonna give 5,000 as well. Thank you. Thank you. It's so important for everyone. Um, we'll be right back, everybody, with what I'm liking.